Thank you for joining today. My name is Brian. I've been with Microsoft for about eight years, and I've been teaching OneNote specifically for about three years. So I have a lot of experience with OneNote, and it is definitely my favorite tool. The reason why it's my favorite tool is that I can use it for not only my personal life, but my work life as well. So what we're going to talk to you about today is about creating a brand new OneNote notebook. So starting from fresh, we're going to go open a brand new one, and then from there, we're going to talk about how we can organize it to match our lifestyle. From there, we're going to talk about how we can search and tag action items. So things that we put within our OneNote notebook, we're going to actually action those so I can make it available for me later on to go through and check off and get that satisfaction of marking off my action items. After that, we're going to talk about the integration with the Office Suite. So not only can we integrate PowerPoint presentations, we can even include Excel and Word as well. So we're going to talk about how that integration works perfectly with OneNote. After that, we're going to go into how we store securely to our OneDrive. So in order for us to take full use of OneNote, we need it to be out in a cloud storage location for us to be able to access it from not only our phone, but other devices as well. After that, we'll talk about accessing it from any device, how we can use that direct link from our OneDrive and send it to ourselves. Also with that, we're going to talk about how we can share and collaborate with OneNote by sending that link to others to have, have them work within our OneNote as well. So this is perfect. I use this all the time personally with my family. We can share action items back and forth. My wife can put together a grocery list and send that to me, and I can go through and action those. So let's get right to the demo. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and create a brand new OneNote notebook. So this is going to be straight from scratch. We go in and open up OneNote and go right to uh, opening and creating a brand new one. So from there, we're going to open up OneNote 2016. Now, if you go and search within Windows 20 or Windows 10, sorry about that. If we go and search within Windows 10, you have multiple versions available to you. Not only do you have OneNote 2016, but you also have the OneNote app. I definitely recommend using OneNote 2016 because it's going to be uh, more more inclusive, and you're going to have a lot more items that you can do within OneNote as well. So that's what I'm going to be demoing today is OneNote 2016. You can see I've opened it up. I've already got a OneNote notebook open right here on my laptop. It's called Brian's Notebook. But what I'm going to do is show you how to create a brand new one from scratch. So if we go up to File, we can go up there and create New. If we click on New, you'll see that I've already synced my OneDrive personal to my laptop. But I'm going to avoid that right now, and I'm going to click on this PC, because this is the most common way that OneNote is created. It's created right on our hard drive. Well, the issue that comes with having it on our hard drive is no one else can access it unless you're on this computer. So that's what we're going to do right now, because later on I'm going to show you how to move it out to your OneDrive. So right here we can come in, create a brand new notebook name, and create one directly from scratch. So if you just type in Brian Notebook 2, and then click Create Notebook, it will create a brand new notebook for you right on your hard drive. I'm going to go back because I've already created Brian's notebook right here, and it's on my hard drive. And I'll show you how we can identify if a OneNote notebook is located on our hard drive as well. So the first thing I like to do when I'm in OneNote is the fact that um, I can see all of my notebooks in one glance. The issue that I have right now is I can only see one notebook at a time. If I wanted to navigate to multiple notebooks that I have open, I would have to click on the down arrow and navigate to each one of those notebooks individually. Well, that could be a pain having to navigate back and forth between all of those notebooks. So the first thing I like to do is I like to pin my notebooks off to the left-hand side. So from that drop-down window, if I click on the little pin icon, it will pin all of my notebooks off to the side. So now it's a lot easier to navigate between all of my notebooks in one view. Not only that, but I can expand this as well to see sections that are in each one of these OneNote notebooks. So now that we've created our OneNote notebook, let's talk about how we can organize our notebook. So we've created one brand new from scratch. We saw how when we create a brand new notebook, it comes in with one new section up on the top and then a page off to the right. Well, what we want to do is we want to add additional sections. How we organize our notebook is how we want to organize our life. So th think of it this way. In this case, maybe this is a personal family notebook. Well, we what we want to do is we want to rename these sections. 
what we can do is double click on each one of these section titles. So in this case, new section one, I can rename this to shopping list. That's one, I, that's one section within our family notebook. I can create additional sections just by clicking on this plus icon. If I click on the plus icon, you'll see it will add in a brand new section. I can add in, maybe this is going to be vacation ideas. We can also add in another section. Let's say landscaping. So we have multiple options for us here to add in some additional sections and organize our life by those sections. Within there, also, you can add in pages. So you see how we have our shopping list here? Well, we can add in additional pages just by clicking on Add Page. Now, this is a pretty simple way of organizing, but let's say we start adding more and more uh, sections within our notebook. Not only do we have vacation ideas, maybe it's vacation ideas for certain locations. We start adding in additional items such as, let's say we're going up to Canada, and uh, then we've got Mexico travel ideas, and then we've got some Europe travel ideas. So you can start to see as we add more and more sections, it's taking up more and more space. And it's kind of hard to be a little bit more organized. How we can be more organized with our sections is we can create section groups and organize like sections together. So in this case, I can see that vacation ideas, Canada, Mexico, and Europe, those are all in that vacation realm. So what I can do is I can right click off to the right of that plus symbol and create a new section group. If I create a brand new section group, I can title this one, you know, vacation, or I can title it family vacation. So now I have a section group titled family vacation and I can include all of those destinations and those original vacation ideas. How do I move these items into that section group? Well, now that I can see the section group is available over here on the right hand side, I can click and drag each one of these items into that section group. So now vacation ideas is now within family vacation. Same thing with Canada. I want to pull that over to family vacation. And the same thing with Mexico. I want to also show you that you can do the same thing over here on the left hand side. So we see Europe is another vacation idea that needs to go into that vacation section group. I can click on Europe, drag it down to family vacation, wherever I want it to appear. So now you can see our family notebook is getting a lot more organized. So not only do we have our shopping list and our landscaping up at the very top, but we also have family vacation ideas off to the far right and we're a lot more organized. Now within each one of these, think of a notebook in this way. We have our notebook, we have section groups, Within each section group, we have sections, and then on each section, we have pages. Well, think of it, you know, just like a folder, file folder. We've got folders within folders within folders. You can also organize pages in the same way that we organize sections. So in this case, let's say shopping list is for a birthday party. So we're going to type in birthday party shopping list. So we're going to create a brand new shopping list for our birthday party. What is included with that birthday party shopping list? Well, the first thing we've got are cake ideas, right? So we've got some cake ideas, and after that we need some food ideas as well, and maybe some activities. So each one of these pages is in still in reference to that birthday party shopping list, right? These are things that we have to do in addition to the, that original birthday party shopping list, but they're all associated to that birthday party. So how can we make this seem more, um, more in line with each other? Well, we can make each of these pages a subpage so that each of, these page, each, each of these pages is in reference to that original birthday party. So with Cake Idea, if I right click on that page, I can then make it a subpage. And you'll see it will appear right below that birthday party in a subpage. Same thing with Food Ideas. I want this to be made a subpage and Activities. Now again, we're becoming a lot more organized because now our birthday party shopping list can be expanded and uh, reduced. So now we've got our birthday party shopping list right up there at the top. We can expand it and see, okay, it looks like we need to do cake ideas, food ideas, and activities. The next item on our list that we wanted to cover is the idea of searching and tagging action items. So included in this is the ability to add some additional content. So right now, 
all we have are these pages and then the birthday party shopping list, right? Uh, that's the title. We don't have anything included inside each of those pages. What we need to do is we need to start adding some content in there in order for us to be able to search and tag items that need to be picked up or, or uh, that are items for us to do. So in this case, on the birthday party shopping list, let's go down to cake ideas. Right here, we can talk about flavors. So we can, we can type it out directly within the page. So let's say cake flavors. We want chocolate cake, vanilla cake, or let's say, let's add some sprinkles in there. So we can start to add in some different flavors that we want, right? So we got chocolate, vanilla, we want to make sure we have sprinkles on top. So th these are items that we want to go through and reference. Or maybe this is exactly the type of cake we're looking for. In that case, what we want to do is we want to add some check marks for ourselves. How do we do that? Well, within OneNote, right on the Home tab, we have the ability to create to-do tags. So for each of these cake flavors, I'm going to highlight each one of these. So First of all, we want our cake to have chocolate cake and vanilla cake, and we also want to have sprinkles on top. Well, I can have these be to-do tags. So all I did was highlight each of those items and then add, click on the to-do tag. You'll see it will insert little squares right next to each of the flavors. So now, as soon as I go through and make sure that, each, that the cake has each one of those flavors, I can go through and check them off. So again, it's a nice easy way to create a checklist for us to go through and mark each of those items off. Same thing goes with food ideas, right? So we can go through and come up with food ideas. So of course, it's a birthday party. We're gonna have some pizza, maybe, uh, maybe some, let's see, popsicles maybe. Why not? And we need some soda. So we can talk about some food ideas as well. Again, we have the checklist. So now we go through and we can mark those as to do. Not only can we mark them as to do, we can actually assign them to certain people too. So in this case, this is our family notebook, and most likely I'll be doing the shopping because I'm not much used for anything else. So I'm gonna be the one to, told to go pick up these items. In that case, my family can actually assign task to me specifically, not just be to do for anyone within the family. Each of these items to be picked up can be assigned directly to me. So again, on the home tab, right next to the to do tag, we have this tags area you can actually create custom tags for yourself. So if I were to click on the dropdown, you'll see the basic ones that, that come through with OneNote. We have to-do, we have important, we have question, all this stuff. It's not really relevant for my needs, right, for my personal OneNote notebook. So in this case, I can go down to the bottom and create a customized tag. In this case, I'm gonna create a customized tag and then click on New. When I do that, I can type in Brian action and in this case I'm gonna add in a hashtag at the very beginning of this uh, display name that's because when I search for them later on I want this item to be the very first thing that pops up so I'm gonna put in a hashtag Brian action I can also create certain symbols with it as well so in this case I want it to have a check mark so I can make sure that did I finish that task yes and I can check it off so I'm gonna add in maybe this little star icon with the blue and check mark. I'll add in that to be part of the symbol. I can also change the highlight color. In this case, I want it to stand out really big, so I'm gonna highlight it green. So now I've created this brand new action item and a, a tag so that I can search across all my notebooks. So I've got right here, Brian Action, and you can see by default, it goes to the very first spot. It gives me a quick link to be able to just click Control plus one and it will automatically tag items for me throughout my OneNote notebook. So I'm just gonna click OK. You can see it adds it up to my top right over here in the tags. So in this case, each of these items on the shopping list is a Brian action item. In that case, I can just click in front of pizza, click Control-1. It doesn't matter where you click within the word, you can click at the very tail end of popsicles and then hit Control-1 and you'll see that it will highlight that entire item. And the same thing for soda. Now what's really neat about this is the fact that I could mark all the shopping items that I need to get across all of my notebooks and even across multiple pages. So in this case, I need to pick up the food, but I also need to pick up that cake as well. So let's go up to the cake ideas and I'm going to highlight all the cake ideas and hit control one. You can see in addition to that original to-do tag, 
I added in a Brian action. So not only now is it a to-do, but it's also Brian's to-do as well. So again, we're marking off multiple pages, maybe down here at activities. I need to pick up some games as well. So you can see I've highlighted multiple items on multiple pages. Well, that can be kind of hard to organize and maybe go back and reference later on and say, oh, you know, I, I checked on activities. All I had to do was pick up that one item. Well, I neglected to check out the food ideas and the cake ideas, so I missed all those other items. In that case, within OneNote, on the Home tab again, if, right next to the To-Do tag, we have Find Tags. If I click on Find Tags, all the tags within my notebook will be organized, and you can see because I added in that hashtag, that Brian action shows up right near the top. Well, that's beneficial because now I can see all of my actions in one single view. There they are. So now I can go through and say, oh, that's right, I need to go pick up the chocolate, vanilla cake, and the sprinkles. So now I can select each one of these items and then go through and mark each item off. And you can see I clicked on chocolate, it went directly to that page. If I were to click on, let's see, popsicles, it would take me to the food ideas page, and the games, it would take me to the activities page. So again, it's a lot easier to navigate across my notebook and across each of my action items by having these tags. One of the really neat features of OneNote is the ability to integrate with the Microsoft Suite. So um, not only do we have the ability to just use it as, as a word processor, right, to type in and uh, tag items to do, but it also integrates really well with like PowerPoint, Excel. Um, so it's uh, really neat features that are available for us. So let's go into that and, and take a look at what that's available for us. So in this case, let's talk about that shopping list again. A very common scenario with shopping is budget. So we need to make a quick budget. How can we do that? Within OneNote, we have the ability, so I'm going to go down to this page right here, this untitled page, and type in budget. Now, what I'm going to do within budget is I'm just going to add a table initially. So I'm going to go into the Insert tab and insert a brand new table. So I'm going to go in and add in a pretty decent sized table, maybe a five by three. So within this, this uh, page, within my OneNote notebook, I've got budget. In this cake, I wanna, in, in this cake, in this case, I wanna talk about cake. So what is the budget for the cake? Well, we want to spend maybe $50 for a cake. I don't know how much cakes cost. Is that a lot? That might be. But that was our budget for the cake, and maybe we ended up only spending 35. So let's talk about, you know, maybe organizing this in some sort of table. So now we have our cake budget. Maybe we have our food budget as well. Maybe that's $100, and we ended up spending $125. And maybe for activities, we budgeted $200. This is going to be a fun party. I, I don't know what activities cost $200, but, but maybe they do. And we ended up spending $250 because we just went, you know, all out with activities. So we have a budget, we've created a table. Well, the integration with uh, the Office Suite with OneNote is pretty amazing in that I've created a table, just like we do normally within Word or PowerPoint, but what's really neat is now that we have this table created right up here at the top under Table Tools. So Table Tools appears once you create a brand new table. You have the ability to convert this table to an Excel spreadsheet. So we've typed in all these details. Maybe I want to run some diagnostics on, on my budget for my party. I can easily convert this to an Excel spreadsheet just by clicking on Convert to Excel Spreadsheet. So in just a second, that will convert to an Excel spreadsheet. So it's, it's converting right now. And we can see back on the OneNote page that it has taken all those details that I inserted into the table and put it into an Excel spreadsheet. What's really neat as well is that we can go in and edit this Excel spreadsheet as well. So if I just click on edit, it will actually open up a brand new Excel spreadsheet with all those details in there. Now I want to show you something that's really neat as well is the fact that let's create, let's create a pivot chart based on these details. We can do that simply by highlighting all those details and clicking on insert and then clicking on recommended charts. I'm just going to create a very simple pivot chart just to show um, examples on what we budgeted for each of these items and then what was actually spent. So that, that first one is, is just fine for me in this case. And I'm going to click OK. 
you'll see it will add a chart right next to our, our table. And then if I click Save, it will save that item back to our OneNote notebook. Now the real power comes from, as soon as, it, as, soon as this updates and, and includes the chart right next to it, the real power comes from your ability to select, sorry about that, your ability to select what is actually shown. So in this case, it's, it's um, throwing up some errors, but it will it'll actually show. So there it is, it finally came in. So we have our budget here on the left-hand side so we can see actual numbers, but we also have a chart to the right. Well, the real benefit from this is we can actually select what is shown within our OneNote notebook. So in this case, we want to see just that chart. We don't want to see the details behind it. We just want to see the really colorful chart that's available for us. In that case, what you can do is you can right-click on that Excel spreadsheet and then click on Select What to Display. So if I click on Select What to Display, right now the default is Display Everything. I'm going to deselect that and then select only the Chart 1, so that item within that Excel spreadsheet. Click on Chart 1 and then click OK. The view will update and then all you will see down here will be that chart. So now, you don't see all the details behind there, all you see is the really nice chart. So as we're going along later on, maybe next year when we're planning the next birthday party, we can look back at what we budgeted and what we spent actually, and so then we can make adjustments needed um, for our family. So that's just one of the great integrations of the Office Suite with uh, OneNote, but the other great one is PowerPoint. So when you insert a PowerPoint into, uh, into OneNote, you have the great ability to annotate directly onto slides. So in this example, I'm going to go down and let's talk about inserting any, any PowerPoint that you would show. Maybe we're going to show a slideshow from, from the years uh, growing up, right? So we're going to have pictures of, of uh, the person whose birthday it is, and they're going to be shown throughout, um, you know, throughout the party. We're going to have a slideshow going at all times. In that case, we want to create a brand new PowerPoint and have it living within this OneNote because this is our single location for all of our storage. In that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Insert, and then I'm going to click on File Attachment. So one of the, again, one of the main uh, great things about OneNote is the fact that I'm just going to insert a OneNote Basics um, PowerPoint that we've created just to show you as an example on, on uh, the amazing functionality that's available to you with PowerPoint within OneNote. So I'm just going to select that PowerPoint and click on Insert. And initially, I'm just going to attach the file and show you how you can actually display, just like we did with Excel as well. So I'm going to click on Attach File. It's going to include that PowerPoint. So you can see it right there. It's available. Now, if I want to see that entire uh, PowerPoint printed out, each page, I can right-click on that PowerPoint file and then select Insert as Printout. So if I were to click on Insert as Printout, I'll click OK because I know this item is safe because I've added it previously. And what it's going to do is it's going to insert each of those items as a printout. So if I scroll up, there we go, we now have that PowerPoint embedded within our OneNote notebook. Now what's really nice and really uh, neat about OneNote is the search functionality. So we've got our PowerPoint presentation in here. We can actually search each of those images within that PowerPoint. So in this case, let's say we search for OneNote. Up in the upper right-hand corner, we have the ability to search. Not only do we have the ability to search this notebook, we can search all notebooks at one time. So in this case, I've set my default to be, uh, my, my search default to be this notebook. You can change that at any time by selecting on this notebook. You can change it, and then you can select all notebooks and if you want to set that as your default, you can then go down and set this uh, scope as your default. But right now, I just want to search this notebook, and what I'm going to search for is OneNote. You can see as I start to type out OneNote, it highlights that image. So every item that is included within my OneNote notebook, it will not only search text, it will search within images as well. So if I were to take a picture of a poster that had OneNote in it, it would actually highlight that word OneNote within that image. So again, the search functionality within OneNote is amazing and definitely take full use of it as well. Not only do we have the ability to search though, 
um, by including our PowerPoint, this is a great way to go through and edit a PowerPoint as well. So we're, we're going from a personal aspect to maybe using this for business purposes, but we've included a PowerPoint into our OneNote. We can go over to the Draw tab within OneNote. We can select a pen. So I'm going to select the red pen because, of course, red means bad and it needs to be changed. Um, so I'm going to select the red, and we can draw with touch directly onto our OneNote notebook. So in this case, maybe OneNote Basics uh, needs to be a larger size. We need to move this Work Smart at Microsoft item down to the bottom right-hand corner. So we can go through and annotate directly onto this OneNote notebook and identify items that need to be changed. So this is a great collaborative tool. And in just a second, we'll talk about how we can share uh, out with others to collaborate. But this is a great way for me to go through and check out this PowerPoint, make my changes, and then submit this to somebody else later on for them to go through and make those changes. So again, really neat ability to be able to draw directly onto your OneNote notebook. Now, just like, just like having a notebook, you know, think about when we were back in school, having all those sections and stuff like that, we had the ability, again, to draw anywhere within our notebook. Same thing goes with the ability to add text and draw ourselves within this notebook, within OneNote. Think of OneNote as a virtual notebook, right? So our, you know, the, the old notebooks that we had, the spiral bound notebooks we had, is, this is the same thing except for it's in digital form. In that case, we have the ability, so if I were to just select type, I can type anywhere on the page. I can type here, over here, and down here. So you can see, I can type anywhere on the screen. Well, that's because it creates brand new text boxes everywhere I select and, and create brand new ones. With those text boxes, I can actually move those around as well. So I can click on each one of these text boxes, I can pull them up and around. Now, as you start adding content into your OneNote notebook, the real issue you run into is lack of space. So let's say at any one point, let's say I start drawing a little bit too. Maybe I draw in, you know, hello. So we start drawing in some additional items. Well, now if I wanted to add something in between, I can type here and over here, maybe something right in between. There's not a lot of real estate there for me, and I could move each thing individually, but then they would lose their aspect for, with each other. And I don't want to do that. Maybe I've set this up to be exactly the way I want it to look. In that case, you always have the ability to insert some additional space. So on the Insert tab within OneNote, make full use of Insert Space. You can add space anywhere within your OneNote notebook, and what it will do is it will maintain that aspect ratio with everything else. So if I click on Insert Space, I can hover in between, I can type here and over here, click, and then drag down. You can see everything has maintained its distance with each other down below, but I've added in some additional space up above. So this is perfect for us to add items in later on. You also saw how I was able to draw. What's really neat about the ability to draw into our OneNote notebook is the ability to convert ink to text. So you can see I've, I've drawn in there, hello. If I were to, on the Draw tab, click on ink to text, it will actually convert what I wrote into text. Um, so there you go. It, it's now, now into hello, and now it's able to search. But let me undo real quick, and let me again show you the amazing search functionality of OneNote. I, I drew that in there. That does not look very good, right? Um, but if I search within my OneNote notebook for hello, you can see it highlights my inking. So everything that I write, if it recognizes it as a word, it will highlight it for you and, and will um, make sure you, you search for it. So I can search for hello, even with my really horrible handwriting, it will actually highlight that item for me. So again, amazing search functionality within OneNote. It can even read my horrible handwriting. So, so great, great abilities available for you there. The next item we want to talk about is, we've been talking about OneNote directly with me just using it personally. I have it stored on my hard drive. I'm the only one that can access it. I can't share it out with anyone else. How do we make it avail available out to everyone? So everyone that I want to make it available to. Well, the, the power that we get from sharing it out to OneDrive and storing it there is the ability to share with other people and collaborate with them effectively. 
So not only can we share it with them to view only, we could actually give them some edit access as well. And then that would allow them to go in and make changes as needed. So how do we store out to our OneDrive? What I'm going to do is I am going to go back to my OneNote notebook and I'm going to show you how I can identify where my OneNote notebook is located, first of all, but I'm also going to show you how you can move it out to your OneDrive for Business safely and securely. So right now, if I hover over my notebook name, I can see right below Brian Notebook, it says Documents and then OneNote Notebooks. I know that it is stored directly on my hard drive. If I right click on my notebook name and then go down to Properties, I can see again where the location is. Right now it's Documents, OneNote Notebooks. This is where I can change the location of my OneNote Notebook. If I were to click on Change Location, now I've, I've synced my OneDrive personal down to my hard drive. So that means I can easily access it from the quick links along the left hand side. So down on the left hand side I can see there's my OneDrive dash personal. If I were to click on that, it would access my OneDrive out in the cloud. So again, this is associated to my Live ID, um, and it's free. You, you have a, I think you have five, five gigabytes of storage out there for free if you have a Live ID. So again, take full advantage of this because the real power from OneNote is not only from your usage, but the ability to collaborate and share with others as well. Because what good is my family notebook if I'm the only one in my family that has access to it? I want to be able to share it with them and work off of the same one together. So in that case, I'm going to click on OneDrive Personal and I'm just going to save it directly to my OneDrive Personal there. I'm going to click Select and you'll see in just a second it says OneNote is syncing changes. And in just a second it will package it up and say, hey, your notebook is now syncing to the new location. So if I click OK, I can see there's a little sync icon right next to my notebook title. If I hover over my notebook title again, I can see right below Brian's notebook, it says OneDrive dash personal. I now know that my notebook is out in the cloud. If I right click on my notebook again and then go down to properties, again, I can see where that location is. Now again, the real power of having our OneNote notebook out in the cloud is the, the ability to access it from any device. Now, the real benefit of having, having our OneNote notebook out into our OneDrive is the ability to access it from any device, right? So, on any of our devices, on any of our phones, we have the ability to download the OneDrive app. The OneDrive app is free across all devices, so definitely go out and, and make full use of it. You open up the OneDrive app, you can then go directly log into your OneDrive and access your OneNote notebook. Now the real benefit of this is, any changes I make directly to this OneNote notebook on my laptop will then sync across to my phone, it will sync across to my wife's laptop, it will sync across to her phone. So again, it will be available across any device. So that's the real magic of having this in one location. Now, I've, sent, I've saved out my OneDrive for business, I mean I've saved out my OneNote out to my OneDrive for business, now I want to share it. So with the ability to store it out there comes the ability to share. How do we share our OneNote notebooks? If we were to click up on File and then go to Share, you can see right now it says Share with People, and right now you'll see the default right down here is Shared with Brian Patrick, which is my middle name. Uh, so there it is, Brian Patrick. I am the owner, and you can see right now by default it is only shared with me. So that's one fear I want to ease of yours that, oh, I've moved it out to a cloud location, it's automatically going to be visible by, by anyone and everyone on the internet. That is not the case. I have permissions to this notebook to then share out with specific people. Because I'm the owner, I'm the only one that can share out this notebook as well. So if I were to share this with my wife, I can give her edit access. She is not the owner, so she can't share it with anyone else. She only has the ability to go in and edit, add, and remove item, items. So in this case, I'm going to go in and add in my wife's email. So she's had this for a long time. 
I'll add in her email address and I can give her edit or view access and then I can click share. What that will do is that will share automatically my OneNote notebook with my wife. So now, not only does she have access to it and I have access to it, you can see she'll show up on the right hand side. At any time, I can go and remove access as needed. So, I'm back to my OneNote notebook. She has access to this OneNote notebook. She can go add in any items later on. Now, something that comes up with being, uh, having a shared OneNote notebook is lots of people going in and making edits at a time. Lots of changes being made, items being removed, pages being deleted. This, it, this is the same for even if it's your personal notebook, if it's your work notebook, we run into the same problems of you know, people going in and making changes without clarifying them first. In that case, OneNote keeps track of this for us, which is, which is super. So in OneNote, now that we have a shared OneNote notebook, along the top, you can see right next to Draw, we have the ability to go in and access history. If I click on history, I can see all the items history. So right now we created this brand new OneNote notebook from scratch. So really there's no history, right? I've created each of these pages fresh. There's only been one version of each of these pages. But let's go up to this Work Life Productivity Online Toolkit that we have created um, internally. So th this is one that we used several years ago and it's no longer in production. But this is a great example because it has a lot of history for us. In this case, you can see if I select on each one of these pages, I can then select on page versions. So in just a second, it will show up. So, sorry about that. All right, let's go down to the WorkSmart experience. So it should have page versions. So unless all page versions were deleted. So in this case, let me go back to the WorkSmart. There we go. So now on the History tab within this WorkSmart notebook, I can see that there are page versions on this page. And the same thing should be the case for, and now, now it's coming through, is this Work Life Productivity Online Toolkit. Each of these pages has page versions. So if I select on a page, I can go back and see oh wait, something was deleted from here that was really important and it wasn't clarified with me first. In that case, I could select on the page and then click on page versions. What's really nice is that underneath that page, it keeps a running history for us. So you can see all the way back in August of 2015, a change was made to this page. If I wanna go through and see what that change was, I can select on that item and see that all the highlighted items in green were brand new to this page. So that's probably because this was a brand new page that we created and all those items were dropped in there. But I can go through and click on each one of these pages and see what was brand new. So if it's highlighted green, that means that, there are, um, that that was the new item that was included. So this comes in really handy in a shared notebook environment. Now, again, with great power comes great responsibility, right? We've shared out these, these, these items and everyone has access to it. Well, the problem with that is we get lots of hands into a single location, lots of changes are gonna be made. The benefit of OneNote is that it keeps track of those changes for us and we can always revert back to a previous item. So in this case, let's say items were overwritten um, on 224 rather than uh, overwrote those changes we made on 29, we can always restore back this version by right clicking on that page and then restoring it as the latest version. So again, you can always go back and reference it. What's really nice about each of these notebooks as well is the ability to identify when new items have been added to a OneNote notebook. If you look along the left-hand side of my notebooks, you can see that there are some notebooks that are highlighted or bold and others that are not bold. That's how we can easily identify when a notebook has new information. So in this case, I can see that Brian's Notebook Personal, Brian's Work, and SuccessFactors SOP has new information. That's because it's, it's bold. If I wanted to go through and see what new items were included in there, I could then click on each of those notebooks and identify what's new. What's also nice as well is within OneNote, if I were to click on a notebook that has new items, maybe it's bold, in this case, each of the sections that have new content would be bold as well, 
as well as the pages. So I can identify the individual page that has new content directly just from looking at it from this screen. Now, if I don't want to go through all that work, maybe it's, maybe it's down deeper into a couple of the sections, I could always go through and click on Next Unread. Well, you can see right now that within this notebook, I've, I've read everything, um, but I could easily click on Next Unread and go to that next item that is new to the, to the OneNote notebook. I can also go through, and if I don't want to even go through and check out those items, you know, I just want to start fresh, I can always go through and mark as read. So just the same thing that we do within Outlook, how we can mark all of our uh, emails as read, we can do the same thing within OneNote, we can mark all items as read as well. Now again, one of the really neat things uh, within OneNote, again, is it tracks our history for us. So we can always go back later on, in this case, let's say it's this, it's this family notebook again, and I want to see the most recent changes that were made. In this case, I can go through and check out the recent edits, and I can filter those recent edits by a certain time frame. So in this case, I'm going to say, let's see the recent edits for the last seven days. Well, in this case, because it's a brand new notebook, every single one of the pages is going to be on the right-hand side. But I can see each of those items shows up on the right-hand side, and I could go through and click on each one of these to identify what was added. So I can see right here, birthday party shopping list, if I click on it, those items come up, food ideas, it will highlight everything in yellow, the new items that were added. So again, we can go through and see each of those edits that were made. You don't want to go through that, see, what was, uh, see the recent edits, maybe you want to find them by a certain person. Maybe, I don't want to see the items that I added, I want to see the items that my wife added. In that case, what I could always do is I could find by author. So each person that makes changes within the OneNote notebook, OneNote tracks that for us. And then you can see right here next to the pizza, popsicles, and soda, it has my name. If I hover over it, it has Brian Mooring. Now, right now, within this notebook, you will see that I am the only author. That's because I just shared the notebook and no edits have been made. But I could expand the list and see all the changes that Brian made directly. I could also search additional notebooks. So again, like within all uh, of OneNote, you can change the scope of which you search. So right now, we're just searching this notebook, but we could easily search all notebooks. So you do have that ability as well. And you can see, again, we start to get, see more and more names appear on the right-hand side. That's because now it's going across all of my notebooks. The last thing I want to cover with history is this idea that we have this shared notebook location, we have a shared notebook, we're working it together, and maybe items were accidentally deleted. So maybe this budget page that we worked so hard on, we created this Excel spreadsheet, we have this nice chart, maybe it was accidentally deleted. What do we do with it now? It's not going to be in my recycle bin on my desktop, so where does it live? Each OneNote notebook has its own recycle bin. So I'm on the Brian notebook, I can go into recycle bin, just a second, it will refresh. If at any time your notebook is not syncing, you can always right click on, on your notebook and then sync this notebook now, and it will sync up to the cloud and update, update the cloud with, with your latest information as well. While that's working through, uh, it's, it's syncing, um, I can go up here to the WorkSmart Experience notebook and just show you as, as an example. Here's the notebook recycle bin for this notebook. Now each notebook, again, has its own recycle bin. If I were to click on this notebook, I could see that any pages that were added would be in the deleted pages section. If a section was deleted, it would show up here and on the top as well. At any time, if I want to restore that, I would just right click on that individual page and then click on move or copy. Now when you click on move or copy, you can move it to a different section within your notebooks that you have open, or you can just move it back to that original spot. So in this case, maybe I want to move this to the Brian notebook. I can select that notebook from the list and then go into, let's say, shopping list, and I can click on move. Now, if you click on move, it will physically move that page to the new location. If you select copy, it will create an exact copy in the new location. So you do have that ability as well. So if we go out to Brian's notebook where I just copied that page, um, it is now available in the shopping list, and here it is. That's that, uh, that's that page that we were able to copy out to, to our notebook. 
So last thing I want to talk about is the ability to um, sorry. Last thing I want to talk about is the ability to review. So again, like all like all Microsoft products, we have built-in spell check and we have the, the thesaurus, but we also have research available as well. So take full advantage of these incorporated tools that we have with OneNote um, because again, it, it provides you a lot more benefits than than just um, you know just randomly assuming. Um, you know, that you spelled the things correctly, which in most cases I did not. Uh, so in this case, you could always run your spell check just like you do within Word and, and uh, PowerPoint and all your additional um, Office products as well. Probably my, my most favorite, though, uh, aspect of OneNote, and I know, I know we're getting close to our time, so my, my, probably my favorite feature within OneNote is this idea of linked notes. Um, so you can see right here on Review, uh, on the far right, we have this ability to create linked notes. Now, uh, why would why would we do this? Um, what I've used this several times within research projects, and again, even for family time, researching vacations. This idea of creating linked notes to a location. So we could use the web. We could link notes to that website. We could link notes to a PowerPoint. So in this case, because I have a PowerPoint open, I'm going to click on linked notes. What I can do is I can click, uh, click on a certain location, which I definitely want it to be within my Brian's Notebook and Untitled page, so I'm going to click OK. So now what I'm going to do is I have the PowerPoint open along this left-hand side. So I can say these are my linked notes. So access, and then as I start to type, you'll see a little window pop up on the screen. It says we'll automatically create links in your notes to the documents or web pages. Now why would I do that? So I'm going to click OK just to show you the benefits of having this. So I'm going to say access from any device is really important. And then we can go to this next slide, share and collaborate, which we already covered. We can say sharing and collaboration is one of the main benefits of OneNote. Now again, I misspelled. Anytime I can right click on it and spell it correctly. So there we go. We've changed it to, to sharing. So now I'm going to expand this out to be the full screen again. Now the real benefits of having those linked notes, you can see as we hover over access from any device, you'll see a little PowerPoint icon appear. Well, if I hover over that PowerPoint icon, it will actually show that exact page that we were referencing. So again, really beneficial if we're going to multiple sites, multiple pages, referencing different documents. I can easily navigate back to those pages just by hovering over my notes at that time. Oh, there, we were talking about this page. I can click on the file directly from this location, click OK, and it will open up that page directly. Thank you very much for, for coming today. I hope, uh, I hope you at least found a couple of tips you can start to use with your OneNote usage. Thank you very much for coming, and I hope you had a good time. Thank you.